Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show. Hopefully live. Yes, hopefully live and we are back in 2019. Yes, we are. Our very first live show and we are very excited here in the studio, also slightly scared and up on adrenaline. Yeah, I, I think we should be like, you know, we we always have surprises when we have a live show. But this time I think it went quite well. And we have a new technician because we kind of accidentally killed the previous one. I'm joking. OK, we have a new technician because people just want to help us with the sound quality. And this time it's Dennis. Hello. Yeah, so Dennis will take care that we are live on air and you can hear us well. And if you don't hear us, then this is just so embarrassing for Dennis. So I really hope you can hear us. Yes, and this time here in the studio, we have someone we have already had before in the studio. And it is Dimi Cholakov. Hello, Dimi. Hello. It's Good nice, to nice to have you back here. And... This time we have you here to help us. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, we are really grateful that you came back after the previous experience. Yes. Okay. Yes. And <laughs> we... <laughs> it let's was keep a... it in secret. You know? yeah, yeah, let's let's not talk about what happened. <laughs> no. uh, our technicians might leave us quite frequently, <laughs> but at least the guests come back. <laughs> Do technicians leave us or are they lost somewhere <laughs> i don't know I that is uh, i would yeah do, okay okay. <laughs> okay so but dimi is here again yes yes so yeah. today we want to talk about 2019 we want to talk about unstacking your 2019 with new year's resolutions and then i have this small little add up yay or nay <laughs> Wow, Marta, did you practice that? No, but it's coming straight from my heart. Wow, yay! <laughs> that also came straight from, straight from my heart. Yep. Okay, so guys, the new year has be begun. And the new year should start with this positive energy and we should be able to like totally go for it, you know, all the way, 100% full speed. Yet this year somehow it's not really happening this way for me and around me. Mm -hmm. Not not for me neither, Dimi. Mm -mm. Mm. So I don't know what you will say about that, but it's even getting better. Not yeah. for some other people neither, because we talked with people. We talk with people, yes. And uh, many people have this kind of uh, more like I want to sit on a couch and uh, watch <laughs> movies and eat cookies. And I don't feel like doing any freaking shit. I just want to hibernate if I can. And, you know, it's like it's so much against this modern thought of, yeah, we have to make the New Year's resolution, grab the year by the balls whatsoever. It's more <laughs> like grab yourself by the balls if you have them and then just like lay on the couch and go on some Netflix <laughs> binge marathon or whatsoever. I don't have balls, so I assume that that's what guys do. <laughs> At least this is what dogs do sometimes. Dogs? I don't have okay. dog neither. Jesus. <laughs> I will stop now. Okay. I no, know relatively little about balls. So <laughs> let's, just sure, stop. No. let's just stop. <laughs> let's just stop with I that thought. I am blown away <laughs> by this monologue. <laughs> I don't think you are the only one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's pretty. Everyone in the studio is pretty blown away. <laughs> so, Dimi, we hope you're doing better than mm. that. And you are here with us to help us talk a little bit about New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. Mm. And are they yay or nay kind of thing? Mm. Yeah. So, yes. 
Do we need an introduction to Dini? Dini, you have been with us. You have made a couple of shows with us, but just very quickly, just to remind our listeners or maybe some random maybe, people. Yeah, maybe we can ask you, what do you think makes you qualified to talk about New Year's <laughs> resolutions? <laughs> I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, human. but it, uh, for sure, we, we talked before and actually we... We talked with you about possibility of making this live show in l in November when we were thinking about our previous show. Mm -hmm. And you had an idea straight away about 2019. So why? Mm -hmm. Why? 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 That's a, that's, a, that's a very important question. Why? We're going to come back to that definitely. Yeah. But first, just before I give an introduction to myself, I want, because my girlfriend has a birthday today, and I just wanted what? to... Yeah, it, yay! <laughs> that's a yay. That's not a so name. So we start good. I, I just wanted to say to her happy birthday, and that I really love her, and I really uh, believe that she is one of the most important people in my life, and she needs to know that, and also people need to know that the listeners, the people who watch the uh, listen the podcast. So uh, I wish to her to have the best year yet now, and to have a lot of lot of around her. Maybe her boyfriend will love even more her this year. That's that's Let's your, see. just to be. <laughs> and of course, to have a lot of success in everything she wants to start doing. Can we know the name? Victoria. Happy oh. birthday, Victoria. <laughs> Very nice name, Victoria. Victoria like victory. And Victoria, on your special day, I would like to deeply apologize for my boss monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. And uh, Dimi, that was uh, quite cool, I have to tell you, you know, <laughs> just come in here to the radio and and wish her a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Victoria. Yes, yes that was very nice. That was mm. a nice touching moment. So. And she's also very fortunate to have birthday on Friday. It's yeah. it's really great because you can celebrate. She's going to do that today, definitely. Mm, nice. <laughs> so... Um, what I would say that if you go to the topic now, uh, when we started, um, for me, first of all, why I'm qualified? That was the last question. I remember you, you asked me. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm qualified because I had a lot of crappy New Year's resolutions in my life, many of them. But the thing was that I continued doing it to the moment I started having, yeah, during the mm -hmm. next year, you know, the feeling that I'm going to, I'm really excited about the year I have ahead. And... Uh, through my development in a personal growth, I learn how to know more about myself and what I really want to follow and what to achieve during the my life, you know, the, 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 next, the next five, ten years <clears throat> by using the formula I was talking last time. And uh, right now for me, I'm really excited about this year. I'm really excited about it because what I want to accomplish this year is super important for me and I know that I feel it because... Uh, recently, I read the book uh, called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, amazing book by Joe Dispenza. And he's talking that you want, if you want to achieve something, you need to have intentions and feeling matched. If you don't have that, mm -hmm. you cannot achieve it. If you have a great intentions for the year, but you don't feel the feeling of it that you really want it, you mm -hmm. can do it because the feeling makes the work. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think most people uh, lack. At least I was lacking that when I started doing that for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, just maybe I, I would say people know who I am, but right now what I'm doing is I'm leadership consultant and mainly I'm working with companies. I'm working a very big project right now, how to transform the culture in companies so that people inside of the companies feel like family. They are not just like they're there to do their job and go home mm -hmm. and make money. So this is my main goal right now. And we're helping the leadership team to create this environment for the people. So they do a lot of resolutions in the companies to mm -hmm. make this happen. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Because they okay. want to know what they want to accomplish in the company during the year. Not okay. what kind of money you want to make only. But mm -hmm. how to use all of this to make people happy in the company. And the money will be a result of that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the transformation you want to make in the companies. That they understand that they need to start from that. And uh, as I said, like for me it's important to match the feeling and the intention, the intention yeah. in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And this is the lacking piece, in my opinion, definitely. Mm, that's quite interesting. And I think I would be way more like, yeah, if I wouldn't lack one little thing. Uh, 
a feeling of actually doing all that shit. <laughs> you yes. know? This year, I have to say, it's very, very uh, strange for me personally. And I think Marta can agree and probably give her side of her story. But this year for me started with like, I don't feel like doing anything. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like doing anything any resolutions at all actually i hear resolutions and i want to puke Mm. on someone preferably who said that and if not just free flow puking (laughs) (laughs) it's just it's just uh yeah i know that i have my day today after both we have uh, yeah (laughs) Uh, but the the thing is that i got so uh i don't know it's like because what i uh what I suspect is happening sometimes, you know, we have those mm. trends and when they are new and fresh, they are new and fresh. And then when they are like those kind of old potatoes that you try to refry the fifth time, mm. they just become really undigestible, if you know what I mean. And I think that New Year resolutions became one of those things. Uh, so maybe it's a matter of calling it differently, but nope thank you no new year's resolutions this year for me this is how i felt Mm -hmm. the second thing is i didn't even feel motivated to do anything i literally just wanted to lay down on a couch or on a bed and and just i don't know sleep or watch something i didn't felt motivated at all which Mm -hmm. was quite weird because usually i can pull myself together at the beginning of the new year but this year i was like nope i'm not doing that so marta you had the same right no, not the same no, not really actually i mm. actually <laughs> have written <laughs> like five pages of a3 of my new year's uh, wow. intentions intentions it's more like i feel tired i feel much 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 more mm. tired so i don't have this big energy for like really going ahead and grabbing the year by the balls mm. but i do actually i Previously, I was doing like this New Year's resolutions and I was making like very long list of different points, uh, you know, of what are the things I want to achieve. And many of them I actually have been achieving and I have general positive, uh, positive, you know, um, success stories on how I have turned my New Year's resolutions into my goals and then I have achieved them. So, uh, but this year I have decided to try something new and I have actually been inspired by by what you were doing in the previous years. Mm. And I have written a whole letter to myself Mm. and I have been like very much going into the intentions and so on. So I have been not really like you (laughs) when it comes to those (laughs) New Year's resolutions, but the, the general energy of like, you know, like winter, like like the nature is hibernating right now, mm. the animals are sleeping, I feel like I need much more sleep and so on. And last year we were starting by our event, How to Rock 2018, yeah. uh, Anna and I, with You've Got Five Options. And this year we are kind of like not doing anything similar yeah, to that. Yeah, but you know, that was the year <clears throat> when we were taking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I... I don't know what's wrong with her today. (laughs) Well, (laughs) it's the first time I saw people. (laughs) You know, I was laying on the couch until 11 and finally there are people and I don't know what is happening. No, but uh, you are right. We were we were having more dynamic. uh, We we actually were motivated to do the work last year. Yeah, last Mm -hmm. year was very much like starting with this Mm. very strong energy and so on. This year I'm just into cleaning my house i'm into you know i'm into tidying my house creating joy and nice atmosphere at home and so on i'm not into the big action of you know yeah big events big achievements and so on how is it going for you Dini? yeah what will you do with us now <clears throat> <laughs> for me i would say that i'm really excited about this year and i'm mm-hmm. really happy for what i achieved uh, last year um because i really Last year was everything which I put it there. I wouldn't say 100% because I don't think that's possible and it doesn't have to be like this. Mm-hmm. But I I got it. And I think what was different last year was that I focused on the right things for myself. The things which I really wanted and not the thing I have to do. Mm-hmm. Because as I was hearing you, I don't know if that's the reason for you, but most people, especially me when I was before, I was focusing on what I have to do, what I have to achieve during that year in whatever area in my life. 
And that was one of the reasons I was feeling that, like, oh, I don't didn't achieve anything. And the other reason was because I, um, <laughs> I just put it some kind of amazingly big expectations for what I'm going to achieve during that year mm-hmm. without considering uh, what that, that, that is not the most important thing, first of all, and second of all, that I need to put some milestones during that year so that I achieve that I feel that I'm achieved I achieved something mm-hmm. and I would say that the other thing is that every time when we start something we feel excited because I was hearing we were talking about that last year you feel excited with something new something you are gonna achieve something we're gonna do but during the way you feel that you have a lot of of, top, of course uh, stumbling blocks that they still stay on the way of achieving some of the things or you just go to different states and you get different things you want to do in your life. So you change. Every one of us changes. But we try to stay with the same things, even though we change. Our mind changes. Our, um, I would say, aspirations changes. Mm-hmm. And we need to keep track with, of that. Because mm-hmm. what another thing which I was feeling before was that I was starting it. And then at some point, I know I knew that I was different. But I continue doing it because it's, I'm going to do it. I'm not saying that this is your reason. I'm saying just some of the, you know, observations I had on myself, on the clients I had. Because we need to really find out, first to understand that change is constant. It's really constant. And we need to keep up with that. We need to keep up and observe ourselves, how we change, where we're going. And if we change, we need to put the resolutions in in regards of what happened with us. Not that, okay, I, I said that at least next three years I'm going to do that. And then you be, you say, whatever happens, I'm going to do it. That's perfect. But if you change, which will happen, you need to adjust it. Mm-hmm. You need to adjust it to what happened in you in order to feel excited towards what you're going to happen during the year. It's Of course, that's just a very brief overview of what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. just... What I'm hearing for you is exactly that, because mm, how to say uh, the other thing is we push ourselves. Oh, I need to have the resolution. I need to have specifically everything I need to do. And when you don't have it, you just say, oh, I'm a failure. I don't want to do anything now. The other thing is we focus. Last time we, we were speaking about that. We focus a lot of our failures and we don't focus on our even smaller successes. Every failure in our life, we focus on it. We just try to fix it. But the small successes, we, which they are going all the time, we don't focus on them, which doesn't give us the, the feeling of accomplishment, which actually is giving us the motivation to continue doing whatever we do. Because we need this kind of hormones, if you say, of serotonin, because mm-hmm. it's the hormone of when you achieve, you know, when, together with the other, you know, happiness hormones, which we uh, receive from all of this, and we, they give us the boost to continue doing it. And when we don't know how to do it, then we we got crushed. Because the society way of seeing it is, okay, I have this thing I'm going to accomplish. If I don't accomplish it, I'm a failure. Mm-hmm. This is the way we see Marta, it. Marta, what do you think about the verdict from Dini about our syndrome for to, for this year? I don't know yet myself. I mean, I am excited about mm-hmm. 2019. I have really been enjoying the process of writing my letter to myself, Mm -hmm. which I want to read at the end of the year. And I really like it of turning the resolutions into intentions. And of course, I have looked into some specific things I would like to achieve. So I'm actually quite fine with it. I'm just feeling more like I am one of these teddy bears that needs more sleep uh, right now Mm. uh, than usually. So, uh, for example, I uh, am... Absolutely not like being able to wake up at 5 a.m. and Mm. do the meditation and some of the things that I could have easily set up for myself as a New Year's resolution, for example, that I start meditating Mm. every day now and then I want to wake up before my family wakes up and so on. I feel like I really need that sleep right now. I feel like uh, my body needs to rest Mm -hmm. and so on. What about you? Well, I think that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, truth in what you have said, Dini, but I I don't really see that applies to Mm me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is because I simply feel like I just don't want to. 
It's like, it's, okay, how to explain it? You know, I was actually sharing this with Marta because we entered this 2019 and I don't make resolutions for a very long time. I write the letters to myself, which is pretty much just throwing some idea of vision of your life. So actually the expectation part, I would say, is removed because then I close the letter, seal it, read it here later. I don't even come back to it. So when I open it, it's a big surprise like, oh, I could make a career in fortune telling because things you know just came came true or something mm. so but this year i didn't even felt like writing this letter and i was wondering why and one of the reasons is that i simply wanted to rest i simply didn't wanted to make the effort of envisioning my life mm. and i did decided that you know a date will not dictate uh, my uh, you know basically my timing um and i was like when i'm ready i will do it maybe it's 15 of january maybe it's mm. first of february and then i actually even started to google you know why we celebrate the new year's on first of january <laughs> because you can celebrate it on 15 of may if you want to or third of september and then i basically just realized that it was an agreed date mm. so it's not really a beginning of anything it's just how we are taught that this is the beginning and i was like yeah, okay, so maybe I will just do it whenever I feel like. And this is one of those years when I don't do much at the beginning of the year. Mm. And I'm actually very happy with it. I have those moments of like, oh, shit, okay, stand up from that couch, you know, just just a little bit, just 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 do a movement. Yes, I do have those and I do some stuff. But actually, this time I'm really happy with not doing much, just simply being there and i realized that you know sometimes we simply need those moments those periods be it days or sometimes even weeks when we simply rest because we cannot just work and work and work and work all the time so you mm. are rebelling against first I'm of rebelling. january I'm rebelling. and you are into resting which is also an important thing yeah yep. so guys i would like to move to the other part of our show where we were actually just talk a little bit about some facts behind Ooh. the New Year's resolutions. <laughs> and basically, Ooh. I have asked the Googles the and Googles. Uh, Wikipedia on, you know, what this New Year's resolution actually is. Mm -hmm. And New Year's resolution is a tradition most common in the Western Hemisphere, but also found in the Eastern Hemisphere, in which a person resolves to change an undesired trait or behavior to accomplish a personal goal or otherwise improve their life. So that's like the standard definition mm -hmm. of New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I have a question just to make it very clear. Oh, what's Western and Eastern? Where is the border between the Western and Eastern Hemisphere? That's a very good question. <laughs> I agree that it's a very good question. And maybe if some of our listeners know the answer, uh, Could you then, please, uh, yeah, but I would that. assume that by Western Hemisphere, they mean the Europe and the United States, you know, that that we suppose. And by Eastern, they mean like uh, from Ural to the wild, wild East and India and China. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. Sound, yes. Reasonable. Okay. Our our technician actually is like uh, nodding the head. Yeah. So I think <laughs> that we are okay. Thank you. Thank you, so Dennis. The, you are way the, more useful than I thought you will be. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, this is this is some a part of our culture yes. to make the resolutions mostly. I wonder mm. what they do in the east. And I would like now you, Anna, to tell us a couple of facts that you have researched. Mm -hmm. And then just very quickly give us the facts and we can give a very quick, you know, and comment, so comments. Mm. especially you, Dimi, to so. what you think about those facts. And then we will move on into some nice discussions. Yes, mm. I would like to say that I think that these facts are applicable for the Western Hemisphere, which we have defined. Thank you, Dennis. So <laughs> fact number one. More than 40% of people make New Year's resolutions every year. Mm. And additional 18% make re resolutions irregularly, which means that around 60% of people make New Year resolutions. That's number fact number one. So I guess the first question would be, do you guys make New Year's resolution? Are you in 60% or in 40? I'm doing 
you're doing. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I I would say that this uh, I also don't feel it as a resolution. Mm-hmm. Like it's a very good maybe way to say it. I I I believe it's the same thing, but just feels like my intentions for this year. Intentions. I mean, just I feel like. This is what I want to do this year. This is my intention. This is where I'm going to focus my attention this year. Mm-hmm. I feel it like this. This is how I feel it. And this is giving me more inspiration. That may be good remark to make. Okay. And it's the same for me because I also don't really, uh, when I read the definition, I don't really focus on uh, on resolving some of the behaviors that or traits of myself that I dislike. But I also have now moved into doing more of intentions and visions mm-hmm. of the new year. Mm-hmm. Look how Eastern of me this year. No resolutions. Mm. Denise, yes or no? Do you make resolutions? Yes. Yes. You so make resolutions. Uh, Denise is in 60%. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so now fact number two. According to the research, it is estimated that 27% of people have already failed with the New Year's resolution <laughs> in the first week of January. And by mid-February, half of people will give up on the resolutions. Only 8% will make their New Year's resolutions true by the end of the year. 8%. Mm. So, guys, do you have any comments for that? I think actually this 27% of people that are failing in the first week, that's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess those are that kind of I was drunk on 31st of December <laughs> type of resolutions. Like, I don't know. I think these are these kind of resolutions like from 2nd of January, mm. I will be going five times a week to the gym. Then, mm. of course, you fail the first week yeah. uh, of January. So... Yes. Yeah. I believe that too. I I suppose the specifically that the twenty seven percent they put like something it's pe- absolutely unachievable to do because they say okay from next year I'm gonna drink I'm gonna do stuff this year but then from two thousand nineteen or whatever year it is I'm gonna change absolutely everything from the first day, which is absolutely not achievable because you need to change your habits in order to start really doing this stuff. You cannot become be one person 31st of December and become completely another person on 1st of January. But some people think <laughs> it's possible, you know? Because yeah. it's like the the <laughs> new year, the complete rotation, the magic beginning, <laughs> the, the blank slate, the tabula rasa, whatever. I think there is a charm to it. Is there it? is a it's very very enchanting and very tempting to erase all the bad things and I think that mixing it with alcohol <laughs> uh, it makes it really like yeah I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna rock it <laughs> and then you cannot even rock yourself out of the couch so yes I think that there is a magic to it and I think that's one of those things yeah. and 8% of the people experience that magic all the way through the year mm. yeah I think those are those smart people who make smart <laughs> resolutions <laughs> or maybe they make one resolution for instance <laughs> (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That would be also a smart strategy. But yes, 8%, it's that kind of a magical number that gives us hope that it's possible. Yeah. Okay, hit us with the third fact. Actually, the third fact is a little bit of a compilation of the most popular resolutions. So before I will give them to you, I would like to ask you, what do you think is statistically the most popular resolution people make? Dimi? Yes. I know. I just would say the most popular can be something with uh, eating healthy or going to fitness. Just this days in my head. Okay, Marta. Yeah, that was right the way when <laughs> I was coming up with the example before it was about I will go to the gym five times a week. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was right the way what came to my mind. Something about losing weight, going to the gym, eating healthy. Oh, reading books. I have, uh, <laughs> yeah, suddenly it's, it, it's a very interesting uh, resolution. Like, I will start reading books this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read 700 books this year. <laughs> or, for instance, like, I had this, I know what resolution I can make. I will look at the lights before crossing the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Every good time, energy. not just half of the time. Okay, guys, you were right. And then it's such a pity that you don't have a microphone because then you could say something more than yes or no. <laughs> so number one most popular resolution is to lose weight, get fit. Number two, eat healthier or a diet. Number three, quitting smoking. Oh yeah. Mm, oh, Number four, 
Get out of debt or save money. Mm. Number five, find a partner, love of my life, or to get married. Number six, drink less. But that's, come on, it's because of the whole Christmas <laughs> thing. No one really like <laughs> sober January, really. <laughs> you are depressed enough. Number seven, <laughs> learn something new, a new skill. Number eight, get a new job. Number nine, start your own business. Number 10, get new hobby. Mm. 11, travel to new places. 12, read more books. <laughs> 13, volunteer, make good deeds. That's probably also the consequence of too much drinking in the Christmas time. <laughs> and 14, self-care, sleep more, take care of your physical self. So yeah. guys, all those good, fantastic things that actually we want to do for our body to feel happier and healthier. And I think that fact number four will be extremely interesting for you because this is the typically failed resolution from the most failed until the least failed. Okay. And now my question is, do you have a guess what is the most failed resolution from all the resolutions that I gave to you? Uh, I don't know, losing weight. Marta? I remember them because you told uh -huh. me last You're time. So <laughs> I... So shush, shush. Yeah. That is, do you, do you agree that it's losing weight? It's possible, yeah. It's possible, then you said it's possible. I, I would just guess also the quitting smoking. Quitting smoking uh, would is a good be, one or two. Right? Yeah. Guys, basically, the typically failed resolutions are the same most <laughs> most made resolutions. They go exactly the in the same way. So the typically mm -hmm. most failed resolution is to lose weight, then to eat healthier, then to quit smoking, and then get out of debt and save money. However, there are two exemptions from the list, mm -hmm. and those are actually resolutions on which people succeed the most from all the most typical resolutions and this is find a partner love of my life or get married mm -hmm. and get a new job okay so those two resolutions actually we tend not to fail mm -hmm. and we had a whole discussion about with marta when we were preparing our event why exactly those two resolutions are the resolutions where we usually don't fail mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we have time to talk about it. Not much, but right away what came to my mind was what you, Dimi, already told us about, the feeling part. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to put the feeling into, I want to get a new partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to have that intention, I want to get a new partner and feel into it, like I really would like to find the love and so on. And I think it's also very easy to get that feeling if you have a job that you really dislike. And you are going there every day, so you get reminded every day about, so you can get a lot of feeling into wanting to. So it makes sense a lot to me with mm. what you have already mentioned. Yeah. And I would like to add that I have also noticed that the rest of the resolutions require quite persistence, mm. self-resilience, patience with yourself and determination. And technically you can find the love of your life in a club. Okay, I know, or whatever, on the street. You yeah, know, the, there is. Of your life, it depends what. You, yeah. yeah, but you know, <laughs> the the thing is that we actually have a d dynamic with another person that can show up somewhere. So this mm. is one thing, and I think we are more uh, into the instant gratification mm -hmm. thing. So we Definitely. are willing to date. Because we are willing to meet new people, to meet, and they think usually it's fun unless you are going out with a creep or a serial killer or something. <laughs> That's not fun at all. But you know what I mean? It's usually a fun, exciting thing to go dating, to look for a partner. Mm. Uh, start to eat healthier, it's not really exciting. And the, uh, the thing is that she said, it's very important, uh, Marta said that she, it's very important to know one thing that you know, you, you have a idea how you're gonna feel immediately when you meet mm -hmm. the person and find a great job and very often also i want to share that also that we are driven by fear mm -hmm. and the fear of being alone and the fear of doesn't you don't have money you cannot survive can also mm -hmm. drive you to achieve this stuff mm, that's true uh because losing weight yeah. i'm i have 10 come on i'm not you know, afraid of that donut. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool i mean it's not good i don't feel but you don't see mm -hmm. the consequence consequences of that very fast but the other one if you don't have money and if you don't have people around you mm -hmm. you really feel depressed by that so that can be also some of the reasons for that i think 
Yeah. Very good point. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's kind of sad that it's kind of fear-based, but uh, or desperation-based. I would actually <laughs> see, yeah. say, but you are totally right. I'm not afraid of a donut or a pizza, so why would I like have a fear-based <laughs> relationship towards food? And you know, there are some people like, yeah, if I gain weight, I will just get a wheelchair to move around. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can always get creative. <laughs> but guys, I have okay. the last fact, fun yeah. for you, fun fact for you. And this one is why resolutions fail. And according to a survey, because this is actually all based on the surveys that were done, I think, by some American uh, statistic uh, association or whatsoever, 35% of the uh, respondents said that they failed because of setting unrealistic goals. 33% no, not keeping the track of the progress. Mm -hmm. And... 23%, which is super funny, forgetting about resolutions and lack of focus. So basically, you forget you made them in the first place. Um, yeah, so those are the three main reasons why resolution fail. What do you think about that? Mm, I totally agree. I think I mentioned in the beginning about that expectations, that mm -hmm. you put amazing big expectations and you, you fail very fast. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the other one too, I mean, uh, we, we just really... Um, when we start doing it, you don't know how to do it in the way. Uh, the track thing, of course, is very important to see your progress. If you don't see your progress, you don't get motivation to continue doing it. You need to see that you're doing mm -hmm. something about it. That's why you need to put a smaller like points and milestones, like I said uh, in earlier. So yeah, I totally agree that it's very normal that to be the reasons to that. Mm -hmm. Marta. Yeah, I kind of uh, I kind of think that a lot of it is like unrealistic goals. Yeah. I think that putting something like um like if you don't go to gym to the gym at all and you say that you are going to uh, go now five times a week or every day or whatever and of course you fail quickly mm -hmm. on this one and th then you just quit all the way. So and you know exactly and the funny thing with too high expectations or too unrealistic goals is that if you failed on that kind of like a vision of going who the hell goes five times a week to the gym I hope it's not you Dennis then no offense. <laughs> uh no 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 offense man but okay there are some people who are fitness instructors and they actually that's their job. But come on five times a week from nothing so I think the and our brain works like this, that if we set up, OK, I will go five times a week and we fail that one time, we, we are like, oh, I'm not doing it. We consider the entire thing failed exactly. and we don't pick it up. I didn't say. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's done. I, I failed my I'm resolutions. I'm going to back to my couch. It's better. Yeah. So <laughs> instead of like trying to dust yourself up and try again or adjust like okay, maybe I will try with one time a week and see if I will make it, you know, something that is a small step. We don't do that. So we mm -hmm. just throw the entire resolution to the garbage because we didn't, uh, you know, make the goal at least reasonably realistic. I reasonably was, realistic. I was remembering, I mean, once I was talking, I think it was some, my sister, yeah, my sister, we were talking about fitness and she was saying to me, I need to get my clothes in order to start fitness, like special clothes. Like, yes, mm -hmm. I said to her, okay, why do you need that? I mean, what's that helping you? No, until that moment, I wouldn't be comfortable to go. And and then I need to get that. I need to get that. We make this kind of things, some kind of very high requirements mm -hmm. for how it should look what we do. Uh, and then we just don't do it. And we expect uh, to have yeah. this motivation to do I it. totally agree with you, Dimi, although I have to say that the clothes for fitness are really important. I know that every woman <laughs> is saying that. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you don't want to go like in a ugly clothes. You want to uh, look flashy and stuff. Okay, no, okay. but I, I, I know the mechanism. You know the mechanism when you are like, uh, okay, so in order, but it's like, Marta, isn't this like starting with a business, you know, until I have the perfect business plan, until I have the perfect uh, marketing strategy. Exactly. I have, uh, and many people, they are, you know, just in a planning phase Who for years. Who have that? Who have that? Uh, I, I mean, if know. you ask the startups. Yeah, most uh, of them, they don't, but uh, I think that this is one of the things that I don't even think it's an excuse. I think some people really need to feel like, you know, 
because probably your sister she imagines mm. herself going on the gym mm. you know even if she maybe need to lose weight or not i don't know mm. i don't want to ask no. and uh, for sure she's beautiful the way she is but you know she sees her going like sexy and she knows it uh. in her you know cool adidas or nike and i i know the feeling you know when i signed up for crossfit i didn't want it to go in my pajama i actually <laughs> bought clothes on zalando yeah. to go yeah. so it it is possible you need maybe something to make it a little bit more special some people can start mm. with nothing they can just i'm going but some mm. of us maybe we need that clothes for gym yeah i i, I thought <laughs> I totally see your point and and that is that is why I'm laughing because you do? a lot of me, no I see it because I understand but the, the here the problem is what is your why you are going to this fitness because a lot of people they go there mm-hmm. even subconsciously they don't know the goal the intention they have mm-hmm. maybe the intention which is conscious is I want to lose weight or I want to you know yeah. uh, be healthy but the hidden intention is I want to show off myself in a way. I want people to like me. Maybe I want to find my boyfriend or girlfriend there. And Uh, that's a problem sometimes. Yeah. Okay, (laughs) I agree that this could be. But, you know, I think uh, in some cases it might be like, okay, I have those eight kilos extra. (laughs) Maybe I will at least have nice clothes, you know, (laughs) like at least this, you know, let's like, let's not go in my full kind of low point you know at least let's just have nice and they usually have mirrors there (laughs) that's why i chose cross and the confidence crossfit no mirrors i i'm telling you guys it's a good okay for everyone who is into any type of training i'm not going to crossfit anymore but Mm. i was and no mirrors fantastic (laughs) all of this you know guys who are standing there and I always thought, what the hell, why they are pumping, you know, in front of the mirror? Exactly. Gone. That is gone. There is no these guys. There is no uh, no guys like this, you know. There is no mirrors, black walls. Fantastic solution for everyone who is going there. Not because of vanity. Yeah. No. Okay, guys. Now we will move to the third part of the show Mm. where we have five questions to Dimi Mm. about unstacking 2019. Mm. With New Year's resolutions. Yay! Yay. Or nay! Excited about it. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) I must say that some of the questions we have kind of answered already, so some of them will be very quickly, Mm. and some of them we will uh, deep dive into them. But Mm -hmm. we've had a very descriptive already answer from Anna on question number one, uh, which is, thinking about and creating New Year's resolutions makes me feel... I remember this puking <laughs> kind of thing we know from Anna, but yeah. what about you, Dimi? What it's does it make you feel? Definitely, for me, it's excited. I mean, this is this is the feeling I have. Dennis, what does it make you feel? 2019? Yeah, making the resolutions. What does it make you feel when you think about it? Uh, it's already broken, so nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have the 27% <laughs> uh, representation with Dennis, who already broke his New Year's resolutions, and he Whoa, Dennis, feels don't give nothing up. about that. No, okay, but don't give up, Dennis. Just re remake your resolutions. Make something like, I will al- be alive, breathe every day. It's start with small things. And yeah. you already achieve it. So yeah. you can exactly. <laughs> See, we can also do the Chinese New Year's if. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a very yeah. good idea. Yeah. So, okay, we know already that. Mm-hmm. Question number two. That we kind of also answered this one a little bit. Mm. Do you set up New Year's resolutions? We have kind of answered mm. for all of us, but we have the question why. Mm. So, mm-hmm. Dimi, tell us. We know already that you do more the intentions mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. resolutions, and tell us why. Because this is giving me the focus uh, to really put my energy on something which is very important for me so this is the way i feel like that i'm doing something and i'm a, i'm really feel that i i'm available for myself or the people because when if you don't have that i can go everywhere we get some excitement about doing different things in life and when i have the resolution i have some kind of direction which i can adjust but this is the direction I have. This is what is helping me. And when something new comes, I always ask m- ask myself the question, is that connected to what I really want to do right now? Or I can just keep it for later. 
So that is for me, which is helping me. Okay, we've had that answer from you, Anna, so I'm not going to ask you mm-hmm. this. But mm-hmm. number three, I definitely go, I'm going to ask you too. So think about it, girl, what you're going to answer. But first to you, Dimi. Yeah. What is the coolest, craziest, or the most memorable resolution you have ever made that came to reality? Uh, actually, it was this year. I don't know. If Already? It's cool. It was cra- uh, last year, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this year it was, can you imagine to achieve everything in 5th of January and then I what I'm going to do this year. <laughs> That's vacation. <laughs> and then one year, yeah. Uh, so what I did at the beginning of the year, I created this, I, I do this vision board. Mm-hmm. And what I did there was I put pictures of, that I, I wanted to be with a group of people. We work together. Every one of them have 10 and more experience years of experience in different areas so that we go and develop and create this uh, product which is going to help companies to transform their culture. And I didn't know anything how I'm going to do that. They had any idea how I'm going to meet these people, but I felt inside that this is what I wanted. And seven months after that, I went to this training in Bulgaria and I'm meeting this guy who is giving me exactly the what I really want to do in the companies, but the complementary side. Mm-hmm. And I asked him what we want to do and said, my goal now is to m- find several people who work together and really create this service and product. And I was really, I, I was, I, I didn't believe initially that this is happening because, and I'm not kidding, the guy, because I put a picture with several guys, you know, girls and guys on, on it. The guy who I talked to him, he l- really looked like the person who I had on the wall. And I'm not That's kidding. A bit creepy, you know. I'm not kidding at all. <laughs> it's it was. It Did was, you show him that? I, I said to him actually I haven't showed him, but I'm gonna because he's coming in Orhus several days, so you I'm should. gonna show and him. And he already likes you and accepts you. He's not gonna <laughs> <laughs> and I was, quit you because I was, really that's <laughs> that's possible. It was really amazing when I did that, and that for me is I don't know. Make Dimi, me th- this is really great story, but it's really creepy with that picture, you know? Yeah. It, it's like, <laughs> from where did you take that picture? <laughs> just, no, just it, was, it was from Google. I mean, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh. Anna, your turn. <laughs> my turn. Okay. Yeah, okay. I will I will tell you what was my coolest, craziest, most memorable resolution because I still remember it. And uh, I think last year I have made the resolution that I will find the love of my life. Okay. And I did. Mm. And actually, at the time when I made that resolution, I uh, could not believe that it's even possible. Uh, because let, let's say that I am not, I was not the sharpest tool in a shed of love. Mm. I had a, a fair share of uh, failures in that area. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I think when I was even, it was the intention letter, mm. you know, that I make intention letters. Mm. I believe that I didn't even really believed myself uh, fully. I was actually even um, talking with Marta. I was like, probably I didn't really put much pressure or expectations on it mm. because I, I was like, but I felt the feeling and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, I have to say that the delivery was uh, better than the post Nordic because I met him a month later. <laughs> and, yep. and I have to say I was really, really shocked. And uh, it's it's now my 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 life partner. So wow. yay success that, story. That's really lovely. And actually I can say that for me with me happens also this thing, the same again on the picture. With the girl I want to meet, she's Victoria. Is this uh, the same girl from the <laughs> Yeah, she's Victoria. She's the, not, not the same, <laughs> definitely not the same. Jesus, because <laughs> Dimi, I would think that you are like anonymously Googling people on the internet. I'm then, finding them up. Then you put them on your vision board and then you accidentally... <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that is uh, quite creepy it's and amazing. suspicious. So it's different. <laughs> I just, just, I think it would be just, you know, for you to come clean, to make the picture of the vision board <laughs> and then also post I'm pictures of those crying. people. <laughs> Don't cry. Listen, if we are not accusing you, we are just pointing out obvious uh, <laughs> thoughts. Obvious things, you know. So, oh. But did you use the picture for Victoria? What do you mean by like like when you put uh, the love or the the partnership in on a vision board? Did you use any picture? 
Uh, you mean this of year? Of the woman or, yeah. Yeah, I had pictures there, yeah. Okay, but it's not her. <laughs> it's not her, but... Is it definitely, the I think some of the features they're looking quite good. I, I, I just see it. It's so like this. again, the person looks like okay. Yeah. yeah, you just you just put actually beside now put put the joke aside. If you know what you really want, uh-huh. and you put it out there, I believe that one hundred percent believe that you are gonna get it if you really want it. I mean, not maybe one hundred percent of it, but a lot of it because you really know what you want. Mm-hmm. So I'm, you see, with you, what happened was similar. What you did, you knew that you wanted it, mm-hmm. you put it out there, and you didn't put pressure in it. Mm. You just gave the chance, you could say whatever you believe in, the universe mm-hmm. or God or whatever, to bring you the opportunity which you're going to get because you know that this is your focus. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, it's because we only have 10 minutes left. And mm-hmm. we have two questions. And this question will be very quickly yep. just for you, Dimi, mm-hmm. because Anna didn't make the resolutions. Yet. So what is the most important resolution or intention for 2019? The three men, I would say one is connected to my personal growth. I want to create... You have to choose only one. O- only one of them. Mm-hmm. Na- the most important. The most important. Definitely the most important for me this year. I, I can say two because I can say what it. One is the my personal, my intimate relationship with my girl to deepen the relationship with her, and the second one is to, um, to, to, to really the project which I'm starting now. To go to the place where I'm totally into it, and I don't have to do anything else about. It. Aside it, just focus more of my energy there. So I'm financially free with this thing, with this project. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. And now we have the last question. And this is where you will get all the time until the end of the Mm. hour. We would like to ask you to help us a little bit, us and our Mm. listeners. So what can we do so that we are successful with mm-hmm. those New Year's resolutions, intentions, or visions. You, of course, have given us mm-hmm. quite uh, a lot. But for those of you who have listened to us before, uh, Dimi has a compassionate leadership model. And you have mentioned that you could help us a little bit based on that model, mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. what we can do to actually be successful with those resolutions yep. and intentions. So hit it. So <laughs> Uh, and quickly. Yeah, I would, I would try <laughs> to be like, very oh quick. <laughs> Actually, I would say that I believe that this model is really compatible with resolutions or intentions for the mm-hmm. year. First of all, because for me, first is don't put pressure on yourself. I think what you did, Anna, is, is super cool because you don't put the pressure. You have to come up with something and fail very fast. Don't put pressure. Give yourself the time. Whenever you we can do it first of March, even whatever you feel like you want to put your thoughts in action. Um First of all, the, f- the second step after that is just, first of all, to realize if you work a little bit more of the vision and the purpose you have right now, even that can be the resolution for this year, I think it's enough. Because once you get these pieces together, once you get a little bit more aware of who I am, mm-hmm. what is my, vi- what really I want to go to do in my life right now why i want to do that just answering this question for yourself that will help you tremendously to start getting more clear of the other parts which i'm gonna say now and of course what are my you could say mm, principles what i'm living by Mm -hmm. this is the first the clarity part of the uh, compassionate leadership model. I just want to ask you, so basically if someone doesn't really have a clarity, mm-hmm. uh, it's okay to park it? I believe it's good. It's, because, o- it's okay to park yeah. the whole resolution yeah. thing and just let it go for a bit and not to force yourself. Focus on the quality. Because I, I think that's one of those things that I would like to you know, say to people, that yeah. if you don't feel it, don't force yourself. Like me, just lay on a couch. No, I'm joking <laughs> with the couch thing, <laughs> no. but you know. So you would but you are happy with that because yeah, usually I when you said you, I, I got the intention that you are not happy with that, but then you explain it and no. I think that's the thing. So when you use clarity, if you don't have it, this can be, I would say that it has mm-hmm. to be, but can be the focus of this year. Mm-hmm. I want to get clarity mm-hmm. of this stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Because one, once you have that, I think that's the hardest thing for me. 
at least. Mm -hmm. But then you go to the second layer, which is the walking the talk. Then you can start the putting the priorities specifically for this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, based on what I am, where I want to go, what is the three or five or one thing I want to focus this year so that I make sure that I'm going towards my vision. And then you put priorities in places and then after that you make them tangible by putting the intentions. Okay, in order to get these priorities, what are my intentions? Mm -hmm. And once you have the intentions, you make it real. And then you go to the next step, which is how I'm going to make sure that every day I'm going to do something towards my intentions. And here comes the model of mini habits, which we mentioned last time, that you need to put very small things, very easily achievable things, which are giving you the success. And you feel like you move forward towards them. And then, because you, you heard, you, you read that the second reason was that people don't see the progress. Mm -hmm. So this is the way you're going to see the progress, that you're doing every day something towards it. Mm -hmm. And then the third piece, which is a compassionate connection, will give you the chance because you're going to fail. I'm going to fail. Everyone is going to fail in some way towards the resolution. Mm -hmm. Then if you know how to be compassionate, to take care of yourself, to have your back, that will give you the chance to jump back fast and go ahead and not stop and stay like two months there depressed while you you failed with something. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the next one, which is sense of growth. Here, you can have the habit or mini habit, whatever you say it, every day to see how you grew, how you went a little bit closer to it because this is giving you the chance of accomplishments which will give you the motivation to continue doing it. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something which feels not uh, you can say easy but it's not because you don't have it in our habits mm -hmm. once put that and you feel that the tiny success it can give you the boost oh yeah i'm doing it i'm going ahead i don't i wouldn't go six times per fitness I, what i'm going to doing with the fitness for example give a very fast example i want to go four times a week for fitness but my mini habit is that every day i'm going to train for six minutes mm -hmm. so i know that this is what is my threshold. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can increase that to 30 minutes. But I know that six minutes is my thing. And I'm giving, getting the momentum of it. And mm -hmm. then you're getting the results of it. And then you want more of it. Yeah. So, so this is... Uh, and the last one, the creative uh, freedom is do it the way you want it. You did it. You do it the way you want it. At you least the last like, one, I did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't push myself to put some resolution which I have to achieve. Mm -hmm. But I'm giving myself the chance to decide how I'm going to do it. Yeah. So in this way, you're going to get uh, mm -hmm. at least I don't know, 20% better resolution this year. Yeah. I think that uh, the model is great. I would just say that probably a lot of people could because we also give it in a really like a condensed form, could mm. feel really overwhelmed mm. by too, so many steps. If you would have to, because I think we have like mm. one or two minutes, if mm. you would have to give one advice for people to start, just one small step to start with the New Year's resolution the right way, what would you say if they have to start with something? It depends what is uh, where you are right now in your personal growth. Mm -hmm. I would say the first step is to put priorities. Mm -hmm. put the priority for this year and the priority can be I want to get more clarity mm -hmm. for my vision or why I mm -hmm. want it. But put one thing, start with one small thing mm -hmm. which you're going to know that you're going to put priority this year, this is the one thing I'm going to do and don't put more pressure on it. Yeah. That sounds very good. And to those of you who really got interested in that model that was now given only in a few minutes, yes. you can listen to the shows that we've had with Demi last year. They were aired in December last year. So then you can really get to know the compassionate leadership model uh, much, much better and in depth. So that's definitely something I can recommend. And for now, I would really like to thank you, Demi, for uh, coming today with us to the studio. Which was and definitely, yay! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> and that you have survived uh, this uh, very interesting outburst of Anna's um, <laughs> balls. Uh, I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> thank Love you! It. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. Bye.
To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks!